Pastor Jeff Riss from the First Baptist Church of Dallas. Always great to have you back, Pastor. Thank you, Shannon. Ed Stetzer writes this in Christianity Today. He says they're at a Southern Baptist or at a fork in the road. The issue is not usually blatantly racist comments. It is the inability to recognize and consequently address issues of systemic racism that remain. It's failing to listen to African-American pastors when they share their experiences. And he goes on from there. Um, is there some validity to that? What is the denomination doing to address those uh, concerns? Well, I, I really think the Southern Baptist Convention is trying to address those concerns. And I mean, the fact is, uh, this denomination that our church is a part of was conceived in racism. I mean, it was conceived over the issue of slavery being pro-slavery. Pro but our denomination has repented of that. It's acknowledged its past and it's ready to move forward. And uh, I think we can never move forward as long as we want to wallow in the sins of the past. So. Uh, uh, I think what people need to understand, Shannon, is the Southern Baptist denomination really isn't a denomination with a hierarchy that controls churches. Instead, mm -hmm. it's a collection, an association of 40,000 independent churches. And this week, we were grappling with, the, with what every mainline denomination is grappling with, and that is, how should faith intersect an increasingly liberal culture? And the real question is, should the church change the culture, or should culture change the beliefs of the church? Southern Baptist as conservative Christians believe the former. They believe culture changes, people change, but God's word never changes. God's word is established forever in heaven, the psalmist said. That's where the majority of Southern Baptists were before this week's convention, and it's where they are still tonight. I want to ask you something about uh, on the legal front. Um, there are uh, now conversations about the Biden administration and whether or not they are going to defend uh, religious freedom or religious rights uh, of Americans, of things like Christian universities, those kinds of things, as that now intersects with trying to find a balance with uh, non-discrimination and respecting LGBTQ Americans as well. Uh, the New Republic writing this says, in an administration defined in part by fruitless efforts at compromise, figuring out where Biden stands on religious exemptions and LGBTQ rights rights is critical right now. What does it mean to compromise with religious groups who assert their, quote, right to discriminate? That author sounds like um, there isn't a compromise to be had. Well, look, you can know where the Biden administration is by what they did just a few days ago. Instead of saying they would vigorously defend the religious exemption for Christian colleges like they had said a few weeks ago, they deleted the word vigorously. The fact is they're not going to defend the religious exemption. That was clear on day one of the Biden administration when he signed the radical executive order on transgenderism. It's clear in the Equality Act there is no real provision for religious exemption. And and Shannon, people need to go back to 2011 during the Obama-Biden administration. It was that administration that went to the Supreme Court arguing against religious liberty for a Christian school, Hosanna, Hosanna Tabor Lutheran mm -hmm. School. Listen, when it comes to his progressive agenda, Joe Biden is willing to bulldoze over the rights, the religious rights of Americans that should concern all people of faith. Yeah, and I remember covering that case you mentioned. It was a 9-0 decision. It was not close. Yes. Uh, we're awaiting now uh, another decision from the Supreme Court trying to balance those rights as well as we look at you know, Catholic adoption and fostering agencies in Philadelphia and anti-discrimination statutes there involving same-sex couples. So we wait on that. Uh, quickly, though, any comment now as the Catholic uh, denomination, which you know I know is not what you represent, but they're now having this conversation about whether or not priests should deny sacraments to pro-choice Politi uh, political figures. Yeah, congratulations to Bill Donahue and the Catholic lead for calling out Joe Biden. Uh, he's the most pro-abortion president in history. He's cramming the transgender agenda down people's throats, denying that God's the one who creates us as male or female, and he's obliterating Christian liberty. And look, uh, uh, you know, people say, well, he goes to church. I remind people, sitting in a church doesn't make you a Christian any more than sitting in McDonald's makes you a hamburger. Jesus said, by your fruit, you shall know them and the fruit of Joe Biden's so-called faith is pretty rotten at first glance. Well, that is something Catholic leaders now will have to grapple with in these days of discussions. Uh, Pastor <laughs> Jeffress, thank you for joining us tonight. Great to be with you, Shannon.